Hi students, I am Dr. Badrinath. Uh, today's video is a transdermal drug delivery system, part two. Okay, so this is very important topics and uh, two topics we are going to be cover under this. Basic components of transdermal drug delivery system, five points. There are a total five basic concepts are there, components. That components are very important. You have to write in the examinations as it is. And also formulation approaches. There is a totally five formulation approaches. So totally five plus five, 10, 10 points you have to keep in your mind. This is also 10 slides, not more than that. Okay, All right. So we are using a very important uh, adhesive layer. That is a super glue layer in the preparation of the transdermal patches. In my part one video, I have already told that these are the not transdermal patches here, what I am showing. These are the handy plast. This is for the local action. I have already told you clear cut difference between the patches and as well as this handy plasts. Okay, right. So this is your syllabus as per the Pharmacy Council of India. Uh, the highlighted points you can see here, basic components of transdermal patches, five points. Formulation approaches, five points. Totally 10 points we are going to be learning in this video. This is mobile, my mobile app. You can be downloaded from the Google Play Store mobile app. My all presentations are nothing but notes. So my all presentations, my notes is available in the my mobile app. After downloading it, you go to the store option here. See here, this is here. You can be find the store option at the bottom. There I, I am providing a notes in the, the different headings like B Pharm C, M Pharm C, M Pharm C, all branches like that. And this is about my YouTube channel. You can go to the playlist so that you will get all my videos in the subject wise. You will get, if you click on each subject, you will get a topic wise. Yeah. First one, basic components of the transdermal drug delivery system. See, whenever you are preparing, whenever you, if you want to become an expert in the trans, in the preparation of transdermal patches, five basic components are essential. That point you have to keep in your mind. Five basic components. Without these five basic components, you cannot prepare the transdermal process. Okay, right. What are that? I will show you. First one is the clear backing membrane. See here, this is clear back. This is a transdermal patch. Here you can see the back membrane. This is a diagram. In the here, it looks like that. Uh, if you go to a medical shop and ask for a transdermal patch, see the back side. Open the pouch and see the back side. It looks like. This. And this is a front side, patch front side. Here you can be find the drug. This is a drug reservoir. That tunnel I will explain you later. See, first of all, keep in your mind, this is a backing membrane is very, very important. Clear backing. What is the main function of this backing? Backing membrane is just like a backbone. Keep in your mind. It is a very flexible, okay? Very flexible. However you want, you can be uh, mold it or you can be change the shape of it. It is a very flexible, not rigid, not just like a iron plate. It is not like iron plate. It is a just rigid. It is a flexible like a paper. It is a flexible and gives a full mechanical support to the drug reservoir. Here you can be find the drug reservoir. That is a second basic component that I will explain you in the next slide. First slide, only the backing membrane. Very, very important. All the important points you have to write in the examination. It prevents the drug leaving from the leaving the dosage from uh, during the usage. See, whenever you are uh, adhering the patch, okay, the drug will leach from the backside. In order to avoid that, this backing membrane is compulsory. So, backing membrane is come. It prevents the drug and also it protects the drug from the atmosphere oxidation, hydrolysis, etc. And all because so that's why this backing membrane is impermeable to atmospheric oxygen atmospheric hydrolysis that is atmospheric moisture so that these two will not enter into the drug reservoir from the atmosphere okay and it must allow the printing it must this polymer what you are using this backing membrane it must allow the printing see here we can be find the print see nor span 5 mg 5 micrograms per hour it releases the 5 micrograms per hour this is a release rate also they have Mentioned, this is the amount of the drug which is present in the patch, 5 mg. This is 5 micrograms per hour. Per hour. That is a releasing rate, not spam, like that, printable. So that easily you can be find, if see, if patient is having a three to four patches, which patch, which is like that, you can easily identify. That's why the manufacturer 
they will print on the back side of the patch on the backing membrane of the patch so it should not be interact with the na drug so if, if it is if it started interacting with the drug drug will be deteriorated that's why uh, the backing membrane as well as the drug reservoir must not drug should not be a reactable okay examples metallic plastic laminate plastic with absorbent pad plastic with uh, adhesive foam pad all these examples you have to write in the examination second one is a drug reservoir second component this is also very very important this is a main thing is a drug see here this yellow mark is called as a drug reservoir just like a reservoir why here you can see the drug see the my arrow mark here see the my pointer cursor this is a drug reservoir okay how you how you can be so it is a mandatory for therapeutic use and a molecular weight uh, 400 is an ideal however you can be used up to the 4 of 500 molecular weight also you can be allowable a large molecular weight drugs will not be permeated by the skin that is a main problem that's why big molecules you cannot make a patches okay yeah and the drug should have a affinity both towards the lipid as well as the water and it must have a low melting point that is very very important and potent drugs are preferable because uh, large dose drug you cannot give in the form of a patch only small drugs only potent drugs you can be given okay right and it should not irritate the skin some of the drugs will start irritating the skin so the drugs the, those type of drugs are not suitable okay non irritant now you come to the third one basic component is a drug release membrane see here see the pointer here i have told you this is a drug reservoir drug release membrane is nothing but a gate here see this is a big gates are there they will open the gate so that they will control the flow of the water see this is a gate this is a third basic component gate drug release membrane it acts as a rate cut here you can see bridge here clear cut you can be see there is a gates are there like this this release is a drug this release is a drug okay number how many gates you want you can be designed uh, as if you want two gates three gates five gates 10 gates 20 gates also you can be uh, manufacture as per your knowledge as per your uh, knowledge so it controls the this membrane this rate controlling membrane it controls the flow of a drug okay amount of the polymer how much amount of the polymer you are using and wha uh, what is the porosity <clears throat> that is a number of pores uh, how you are designing depending upon that you have to be optimized in such a way that so that there will be a therapeutic drug concentration it can be maintained and whatever you are using this polymer rate controlling polymer it must be non reactive it should not reactive it should it should be non toxic okay it should be a cheap cheap okay like that examples are natural polymers like a gelatin shellac synthetic elastomer like a silicon rubber nitrile rubber pvc polyvinyl chloride these are the pipes pvc pipes we are using for the water purpose drainage purpose this is nothing but pvc polyvinyl chloride same polyvinyl chloride we can be used as a uh, uh, drug release membrane yeah fourth one is a glue i have already told you this is very very important fourth layer is a adhesive without this adhesive you cannot make the patch to adhere to the patient's skin so addition is compulsory addition is compulsory okay right see <clears throat> this addition whatever you are using a glue here layer water washable it should be water washable even the water washing also uh, your transdermal patch it should not be uh, removable because otherwise what happen in olden days the patches whatever they are preparing when the patient is taking a bath automatically the patches are uh, uh, getting automatically it will be removable self removing whenever water is contact so nowadays water washable is also okay. even though you are taking a bath it will be remain for a certain such a type of super glues are now available here exactly the pointer you can see here you can be used this adhesive layer should not be present here that is very very important so if you keep this adhesive layer throughout from here to here it is a waste your formulation will become a waste because drug reservoir it, it has to cross so you have to maintain the gates open gates you have to so don't put any ad adhesive layer here next is a basic component uh, fifth one last basic component that is a other excipients what we are using 
in tablets or capsules we know number of excipients okay binders disintegrants so like that uh, here this is a components excipients used in the transdermal patches what what are the different things see first one is permeation enhancers uh, this already i completed in my part 1 video which enhances or which boosts up the drug penetration into the skin that's why the name enhancer it enhances next is a solvents why the solvents are you required means to dissolve the drug drug paracetamol patch directly paracetamol you cannot keep here as a drug reserve paracetamol you have to make it into soluble in a solvent that and you have to make a thick paste that paste you can be place here okay right and uh, surfactants also uh, we are using the surfactant to enhance the polar pathway of hydrophilic drugs hydrophilic drugs if you hydro if suppose say this drug is uh, the drug what we use it is a hydrophilic in nature use a little surfactants so that the surfactants will penetrate easily somewhat a little bit enhances the um, permeation okay like a anionic nanionic we are not using a cationic very dangerous cationic uh, for skin eyes it is very dangerous that's why don't use cationic surfactants right yeah now five systems are there now i have told you formulation uh, systems are there first one this is a Uh, basic thing the, here you can be find the this is called a, here what is a keyword is a reservoir is a keyword <coughs> drug reservoir is a keyword the, in this type of system uh, drug impermeable metallic laminate will be there see here this is a packing membrane that we know very well drug is here we have, we have kept drug in the form of a thick paste or a thick solvent like that and this is a rate controlling membrane and this is a adhesive layer this adhesive layer i have already told you it should not be present this, uh, below the uh, rate controlling membrane it should not be present and see here here in this system what happened drug reservoir is a sand which should between the two membranes one is a sandwich just like a sandwich upper one bread slide and lower one bread uh, bread slide in the same fashion here also drug reservoir we are keeping between the two one is a backing membrane it is completely impermeable to the drug and another one is a rate controlling membrane these are the two membranes so drug reservoir is a sandwiched sandwiched between the two layers okay right so rate controlling member slowly it uh, releases the drug that we know very well example is the scopolamine transdermal system transdermal patches four patches are available 1 mg per 3 days like that uh, here they have mentioned okay sandwich drug reservoir you have to keep in your mind and second one system uh, polymer matrix system matrix is the keyword here here what we are doing is we are not using a uh, uh, rate controlling polymer we are not using rate controlling polymer layer see here there is no rate controlling polymer. here you can see here you can be find the rate controlling membrane here you cannot find any rate controlling drug is directly exposed to the skin you will get a doubt oh, then how the uh, entire drug at a time will enter into the skin you may get doubt you may ask me the doubt now what that's why what we are doing here in the drug we are making a mixing of both drug as well as polymer both we are mixing together we are keeping a paste okay that's why drug will be released slowly because pure drug is not there drug is mixed with the polymer that polymer will try to hold the drug this is called a matrix system whereas the first one is a reservoir system the entire pure drug is there and you are cut on one layer you are using specifically here there is no layer polymer we are mixing with the drug okay that is the main difference between the uh, reservoir system and matrix means mixing matrix m for m keep in your mind reservoir means gate so here there is no gate at all okay because water itself we have mixed with the polymer so slowly amount of the drug will be released here example nitroder nitroder like a, this patch is there okay 0.3 mg per hour it is a release rate per 15 cm square okay for angina pectoris this is we are using for nitroglycerin very and the third one is a adhesive dispersion layer name itself very clearly indicates 
rate controlling polymer is also having a addition character both double dhamaka diwali double dhamaka addition layer is nothing but a polymer controlling membrane polymer controlling membrane is nothing but a addition layer so the layer what you are using it acts as a both so name itself clearly indicate that's why adhesive dispersion see here it adhere as well as it disperses the system like that we are using single layer one uh, one shot two birds like this okay name itself clear addition dispersion here itself acts as a addition as well as rate controlling okay example is polyisobutyl polyacrylate if you are using this type of polymer then one layer is enough example is nitroderm tts transdermal uh, uh, system therapy system okay and the gradient control like layers gradient means layers will be there one two three four how many layers you want you can be designed that is as per your uh, company requirements and all here you can see r1 r2 r3 three layers will be there r1 r2 r3 reservoirs three reservoirs like that if this is having a high drug concentration this is having a less drug concentration this is having a still less concentration this is a addition layer that is a, that we know very well so three different drug concentration that's why this is called a gradient name itself indicate grades this is one grade this is another grade this is a low grade less grade because drug is less here so like that so here what is the problem is number of drug reservoirs are more that's why the patch will become a bulky that is a main problem a drug patch may become a bulky and the thickness of the patch will be more here with this we can achieve the slow steady continuous release this is a, one of the ideal system <coughs> and uh, last one is a micro reservoir micro reservoir see here reservoir we know micro reservoir small small reservoirs are there each gram see here each round shape acts as one reservoir see here one drug reservoir there that is also controlled by the polymer surrounded by the polymer like that number of uh, small small very very small my you cannot see with the uh, naked eye directly you have you want the you need the microscope that's why this is called a micro reservoir you need a microscope to see the reservoir so each drug layer each drug particle or each drug molecule is surrounded by the polymer matrix that's why this is a hybrid system of the reservoir system as well as matrix also so drug is there surrounding polymer is there like that mixing matrix that's why this is a matrix like a liar tiger plus lion it is a hybrid system you will get a perfectly zero order release whenever you want slow steady perfect zero order release continuous release go for the micro reservoir system there is no problem of the dumping also dose dumping okay dose dumping is a biggest problem in polymer controlled first one once the polymer controlling layer is was opened okay that's it entire drug will be entered and it leads to toxicity also okay right yeah this so 5 plus 5 total 10 10 was completed this is one advanced system need not to be right in the examination this advanced system small small needles are there this is to overcome the problem of the protein drug delivery proteins are very big molecular in size it is having a greater than 1000 also it is not permeable to the skin in such a case what we are doing is a small small needles we are using small but you cannot feel that it is a painless needles you cannot feel that there are small very small patch it looks like this it is having a needles okay like this you can be see that if you bend it so it is a very flexible uh, so that on the skin you, you are spreading like this okay so drug will be from the needles all these are the needles so from the needles drug will be delivered somewhat big molecular weight uh, uh, drugs also can be <coughs> delivered so by use this is a advanced system okay so i will end my session here you can see my both youtube channel as well as the app okay